Hello, so today I'm going to go through how to set up the UART using interrupt. So initially I only, I only covered the UART polling. So in the main loop, the UART was printing out every second, uh, just standardly. So like just any time it was called, it was printing out, which is fine for some applications, like some basic stuff. But sometimes you want to be able to receive data in the UART and you don't want to be pulling that pin every second so since then i've made an interrupts video where we use the user button on my dev board to basically trigger an interrupt to print out a message which is kind of it's a step closer so in this video i'm going to talk through how to set up the uart to receive characters over the over the uart through an interrupt and process them that way Previously I live coded in the videos. I don't know if I'm going to do that anymore because it takes a bit longer to do and it maybe comes across and it probably can be quite confusing for viewers and to be honest it's also a nightmare to edit because I'm making mistakes left right and center whereas if I pre-code and show and talk through the code on the video it's probably going to be easier and make more sense. So what I'm going to do now is I've created this like open source repo and what this is going to be is for each video I'm going to have the code specifically for that video tidied up and commented in in a branch on this repo. So if you go and look for this STM32 uh, tutorials repo under my name which is rbevan777, that's the username on GitHub. I'll have a link in the description actually, anyway. And there's a, a readme which kind of explains what, uh, how to use it. So all you need to do is clone this, this repo out and switch the branches and then uh, switch to the branch you want and then open, open the project in Cube IDE. So that'll all, all that code will be made available instead of not in the comments, uh, in the description. I keep saying comments. I always mean description, not in the comments um, of the video. So just as well, if you, whenever you're downloading these projects and you don't know how to open them, all you need to do is file open project from file system and then navigate to where it is. And if you select the folder that it's in, it'll just give you one option here and then you just hit finish. Um, I don't need to do that because my folders already in this in this uh, project explorer so i'm just gonna open this main uh, and the ioc file so you won't have this unless you clone this out what you could do if you really wanted to is do this live as you're watching this um which is gonna make you maybe understand it a bit more i don't know it depends on what way you learn but if we go to connectivity and under uart what you need to do is go to, provided you already have the UART set up, in the NVIC tab, you need to enable this. This just enables it to have the interrupts enabled. And then if you go to the NVIC tab under system core, just double check that it's enabled here as well. It might be, it might not, it should be. And then code generation, we do need to generate the code. So you need to click this as well. So that and this, and then save it and generate the code. And I believe that's everything you should need to do. We might need to go in and disable something again, but one step at a time. So in the source folder, there is a dot, there's an underscore it dot c file. So this double click on that and scroll all the way to the bottom. You'll get this function. You need to get this function and bring it into the main. I already have it in the main. So I've got it in here with loads of code. I need mean, to zoom out a wee bit. Oh God, what have I done? I've split the, I split the window by accident, uh, control minus. Scroll down and insert it here, just below the user code begin for. So I already have it here and there's a couple of other functions that we need, but 
just need to get this one first. It'll be empty. We're going to add this code. And then once that is done and moved into the user code begin, you can get rid of it just by clicking that, saving it and regenerating again. And then it should be gone from here. Yeah, so it's gone. So once that's done, then what you can do is if you come all the way back up, these are the functions you need. So you need this Hal Yurt transmit IT, which is interrupt, it just means. So it's in this Hal Yurt.c function. So send them out of data in the interrupt mode. Uh, pointer to the data buffer, this Hal transmit IT. So you need this Hal transmit IT function. You also need Hal receive IT function. Both of these need set in the main bit first outside the loop. So the reason that is is because we just didn't, this is basically initializing to say look we're ready to transmit and we're ready to receive from each of these buffers you've, you've passed in. Then what we also need is as I mentioned you need the yard interrupt drop handler but you also need to ha send in the yard handler function itself. So this will be called. But then you also need to tell it, okay, process then dropped. So you need to get this function as well, which is in the how yard function. So just handle yard and drop request. So you just copy that, paste it in here, and then give it this yard handle, which will be in this code already declared all the way up to the top. Is it outside or is it inside? It should be outside, yeah. There. So mine's yard two in this case. And scroll all the way down to where this function is. So that's this function setup. Now there's two more functions. You need the HAL transmit callback and the HAL receive callback for the UARTs. So each of these functions, what happens is when, for example, we'll take the we'll take the receive function. Whenever we receive data from the from this terminal let's say over the yard what happens is this interrupt function fires first so it'll come in here first and i'll go okay handle that interrupt and then in this function somewhere then writes it through to the callback function which we end up using which is this one for the receive so it's in this it's in the It's not set up in here. Okay, it is. It's declared as a week. So this week preprocessor symbol basically just means that this is declared here, but if it's declared somewhere else, this will not be used. It'll be the other function that is declared without this week symbol. So kind of like we have here. So we've declared it here without the week symbol. So if you find the rx callback in the yart.c and put it in here and the, the tx and then basically from here what we can do is um, process any data that we've got coming in. So I've already pre-populated this with, with some code so I can talk you through it. So if we have a cards return character so if i if i press enter if i press enter it'll come in here and it'll go okay i want to look for this command and this is a command i just want to look for so it's hello now if it doesn't see these characters after i press enter it'll come down here and store this array of characters into the transmit buffer and then once that's done it'll come down here and transmit the transmit buffer and then once that's done it'll reset this tx buffer this rx buffer and this counter all to well the characters to null but uh the counter to zero so let's say i don't see uh i don't see the, en the enter key and let's say i see ff e for whatever reason um 
what will happen is if I press enter, it'll come into this function and go, okay. Uh, I'm looking here, I don't see this character, I don't see the cards return the enter character. So I'm going to come down here and go, okay. So we'll take the first character and store it in here and then increment this for next time. And then it'll reinitialize this receive it'll reinitialize the yard interrupt to receive again and then because that's set up to receive again this other character is basically waiting for that signal and then it sees it again and goes okay we we'll have to come back in here and go okay same again we don't see this character but we we'll have to go down here and store it, store the, the data from here in this buffer and increment this. So this is basically allowing us to process one character at a time to make it easier to find this character more or less. So that whenever we do see this we can go okay now that we've got this and because we saved up all the characters in here what we can then do is go okay. If we compare the strings, so that's what this is, this str comp. So we'll just compare string 1 and string 2. And string 1 in this case is a command I've designated as hello. So if I see hello from the receive buffer, um, if it equals 0, it just means yes, that's that's correct, it matches. So if if I see the hello command in this buffer and... If it's just a hello command, so if it's exactly that command, what will happen is we'll come in here and go, okay, we'll add this response to the transmit buffer. And then once that's done, we'll go down and transmit it. So anytime I pass in the wrong characters or the wrong command into the terminal, we'll get this printed out. This, uh, uh oh, something's wrong. So if I press FEE, -E, something's wrong. If I press hello with a capital, uh oh, something's wrong. If I press hello with an extra O, uh oh something's wrong but then if I press hello all the ex the characters exactly right and press enter it'll say oh hello to you too so that's basically how you set up the interrupts and process them now you can do whatever you want in here I've just used this as a nice example to illustrate how how these buffers all interact and things like that and how easier it is to process one character at a time and look for these things. So the reason this is useful is because I've worked on a project before, uh, a couple of projects, and whenever we're de you're developing something, it's handy to have a set of, uh, this is basically classed as a, you can class this as a command line. And it's handy to have a load, a load of command line tools to run different things. I wasn't sure how many of these videos I was going to make, so what I might plan to do is go and in the next video. All these functions are really nice and handy, but it's all happening in this one file. And as you can see, ST have all their functions in separate files, so all the UART functions in here, uh, interrupt functions in this IT file, ADC functions were in an ADC file, so it's handy to keep everything separated so what I might do in the next video is basically show you how to separate them all out because whenever you're using this cube IDE you need to tell it the different paths and things like that and that can take a bit of time so it might be worth doing that as well but I'm gonna go because I'm dying with the cold and it took me a while to, to do this and set up this get repo and stuff so hopefully someone finds it useful uh, give me a like if you liked it, give me a dislike if you disliked it, uh, comment uh, for the lols, and yeah, I'm gonna go. Okay, bye!